So the incomparable. I've got this ship and I've been kind of disappointed by it. This is the first impressions though, so I haven't played too many games yet, but this ship's been really hyped up given that it's a Shikishima gun caliber and it has gimmicks, right? We got the incredible concealment, the battle cruiser-ish dispersion, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And of course, speed boost, hydro, a super heal, and the concealment really is special. The 10.6 kilometer concealment is just ridiculous, honestly. It's something that I never imagined a battleship would get at this tier, given that these guns are so big, accurate, and that it seems like you're just gonna sneak up on cruisers and dev strike them, right? That's the That would be the thought, right? However, I haven't ha been having the best time in this ship. It's been somewhat frustrating to play. And honestly, I think that's down to six gun battleship. That's really what it is. I find six gun battleships really, really, really frustrating. Sometimes they work and they seem insane. Shikishima was a great example of this. Incomparable, Georgia. These ships on paper seem amazing. They get better dispersion than some of the higher gun count ships. They get some increased reloads, which Incomparable doesn't really get. That's something that uh, you should know is that Incomparable actually gets a longer reload than the Shikishima by quite a bit. So it's not amazing in that sense as far as DPM is concerned, but it should make up for it with the concealment, the gimmicks, of course, and uh, the dispersion, right? We can sneak shells through this tiny little gap and cheese our way to a little bit of a kill. Uh, early on, but it really comes down to the consistency and I don't trust these guns to do damage. It's a scenario where I want to push in, but I don't feel like I can because I can't rely on these guns. That's what it comes down to for me at least, is that the good concealment, the speed, the hydro, that's a personal hydro, right? Just like the daring, it gives you that early warning of torpedoes. To me, it all looks like the perfect flanking, hard push type of ship, where you try and figure out a way to push in using your concealment, your speed, and try and get a flank on the enemy, right? That's how I, at least initially, think this ship is gonna be played, right? Given the assortment of gimmicks and what I know about this game. The problem is that consistency though. And when you push in, you generally commit. Or at least I should. I should say I generally commit when I push in. Given the difficulty of turning out with such a big ship with a very exposed citadel, you're not gonna get away with going broadside very easily in this ship. It's, it's not hard to citadel this thing at all. So given that it's so difficult to push in, what are you left with? Well, you're left with kind of backline sniping. But it's not even that good at it because it struggles with range. You don't have the range of a Shikishima. And if you take range mod, you have an atrocious reload. So it's a bit of this odd mid-range ship that I haven't quite figured out yet. And that's why this is a first impressions, not a review. Take this all with a grain of salt. I've played a few games and want to give some initial thoughts on it. The tankiness, of course, is something that's been brought up as an issue. But if you angle well, use your maneuverability, your speed well, I'm running the rudder shift module in this case, and it, you can get some pretty decent games in terms of potential damage. You know, this game was a blowout. You know, our team kind of <laughs> over pushed and then all died. But 190k is a great game to start off with, right? But it was still frustrating given that some of these salvos into Bawan ships that you'd think, I'm going to crush someone, they didn't really hit too hard. 3.2, 3.3 million potential damage though in a so-called squishy ship, that's not bad. And that is down to the rudder shift and the speed boost, trying to dodge and of course using concealment to go in and out of spotting. Now on to the next game I've got for you. We're going to look at a situation where I do push. This is the, I guess, ideal scenario, at least in my thought, in my mind so far, for an incomparable push. It's epicenter, so realistically, you're gonna have a lot of people focused on the middle of the map, and we're gonna try and use the speed initially to just get a hard flank on people, so that it's very difficult 
for the enemy team to push into the middle. We, we do that. We get a broadside NC, and we take a huge chunk out of them, which felt really, really, really good. And given that there's a smokescreen kind of charging us, we just use our Hydro. This ship is surprisingly good in these scenarios where you're not overwhelmed with firepower. You can tell we're using the island to limit the firing angles of something like the Smolensk behind the island, as well as the enemies in comparable. We're waiting to see how much is here, and we can dodge all these torpedoes. This personal hydro is incredible. The speed boost is awesome. These gimmicks are great. I don't want to understate that, just because I've been having a bit of a frustrating time with this ship. I am showing you highlights, by the way. This is by no means the uh, the worst <laughs> games, because I don't think they'd be that interesting to watch. So we dev strike the NC, right? It's awesome. You get that flank with your concealment, with your speed, and you get those dev strikes. It feels really, really, really nice. But that's not the norm, at least as far as I've been playing. And the Smolensk is going to show us that in a little bit. It's a lot of overpens, and I've also been finding the dispersion kind of bugs out. I don't know if you saw that first salvo of this video. Um, maybe I should have <laughs> put it in here, but in the first salvo in this video, I kind of nuked a Nevsky, and that was because two turrets were pinpoint accurate, and the other one looked like it had not locked on dispersion. And that's an issue when you only have six shells. We did hit them hard, so fair enough, but it's something that... I'm having issues with the more I've been looking at the dispersion and the way this game goes. Sometimes you get great dispersion like this one where you get a citadel, you're going to hit hard against a broadside incomparable. But the inconsistencies and I guess some of the bugs in the aiming system make it really difficult to play this flanking pushing playstyle where you have to commit, right? Like I committed very hard here into the pseudo middle of the map, at least on this flank. And it worked out because we were able to kill that incomparable. But if my shells had whiffed, you know, we had an aiming bug where they all land short. I'm sure you guys have experienced that. Uh, it wouldn't have gone so well. And that's the issue is when you do have those scenarios where you push in and you're relying on that massive hit to come through and it doesn't, you often die. And that's my issue with this ship so far. It's the inconsistency. Uh, the Smolensk, of course, angles completely bow away or stern into us, and we get overpens somehow on his ship. At least a broadside a CV is something that we can take down. And of course, I understand that we can't give battleships perfect dispersion and perfect consistency, because that would be unfair, and uh, it would be incredibly difficult to play against, especially their current damage outputs. But I just can't help but feel that it's difficult to take advantage of this speed and concealment when you don't know if you're uh, risky or somewhat, uh, I think, well-designed push is going to work or not based on whether your dispersion cooperates. So that's the issue, at least so far with the incomparable. But again, I've only played a few matches. We'll see how it goes. Of course, a uh, full review will be coming in the future. But for now, I think you wait on this ship. I think the Borgone is going to be a way better battleship in the vast majority of situations. It's got the speed as well. It's got a reload booster, which I like that gimmick a little better. <laughs> um, yeah, so far, I think it's not outshining the Borgone at all. And as far as Shikishima, I don't like six gun battleships. I think that's the big deal here. I'm not a huge fan of low gun count when there's kind of trolly RNG dispersion involved. As far as the commander I'm using, it is just the standard battleship build. I don't think that's a terribly big surprise to anyone here. I do think that it could be interesting with super heavy AP shells, given you have a super heal and you're kind of this hit and run style ship trying to use your concealments. So you're not tanking for long periods of time, so the extra fire damage probably isn't going to be as big a deal. And that's something you could honestly just swap on really quickly. Let's say you have a decent daring commander, which I've actually spec'd for my Agincourt. So we'll, we'll have a video for that one in a little bit, but maybe you've got a Goliath or a Minotaur commander, and you can just swap them over to a premium battleship and have a full battleship build. So then, you know, maybe do something 
along these lines and see how that goes. If you have 21 points, get the AR, right? I think it's really cool that it's a premium just so that you can do this and mess around with builds, but I just can't help but think that this is not the first ship you should be looking to get for steel. It's pretty expensive for what it is, and I think it's very gonna be very situational. I could be wrong, and again, I hope I am. I hope I figure out a way to play this where I'm enjoying it, but so far I've felt a little frustrated by it. And that's probably just down to the six gun nature of the ship. I have tried range mod, by the way, but I just felt like the reload was far too long with range mod. You can see with reload, we still only have 25.5 seconds, which sounds really good. But the reason I say only is because we go to the Shikishima and we have 23.8 with more range, better armor, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a weird one. It's a weird one. In a lot of ways, it's better than Shikishima, but it just feels so difficult to make use of those strengths in its concealment and flanking potential when it's still a battleship with six guns that has to deal with RNG. And it's hard to commit into some of those situations. So that's the build. And uh, I think it's pretty good, especially with rudder shift. You can see like 13 second rudder shift. It's enough to dodge a lot, especially with your speed boost up. But let me know what you think in the comments below. If you got this ship, uh, maybe there's some play styles that uh, you've got that have worked well for you. I'd like to know. I'm trying to figure this ship out, so I'd really appreciate that. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.